Hello everyone and welcome to Superman Homepage Live, brought to you by supermanhomepage.com and by our sponsors, Javori, Graphic Design, Web Design and the Fortress of Balitude Podcasting Network. Yes. Uh, my name is Steve Yunus. In this, our December 6th, 2021 show, we're going to be covering a range of topics, including Henry Cavill. He's interested in continuing to play Superman. We're going to be talking about a big auction for some uh, old Superman comic books. We've got TV stuff to talk to, a new Superman suit for Tyler Hecklin, kind of. Uh, comic books and so much more. We're also going to turn to you to ask for your questions and comments on any particular Superman topic you would like to discuss. And to let you know how all that works and how you can get involved in tonight's show, let me introduce you to my co-host. He's settled now, Mr. Michael Bailey. Hey, Mike. Yeah, I have no idea why everything just I, it's turned into like a like a like a Fairly Brothers or Zucker Brothers movie all of a sudden. I was just going to start <laughs> falling and doing Pratt falls, uh, but no one's really interested in that. They're here to talk about Superman because Superman Homepage Live is all about the Man of Steel, and we want to hear from the people that are watching us live right now. And if we don't have a whole lot on the docket, we'll even take some phone calls. So how does that work? Well, you're going to need Skype. Go to Skype, search for Superman homepage, and send us a message saying that you'd like to chat with us live tonight. Now, a couple of things, and these are both very important. One, wait for us to call you, because this is not an easy thing, and sometimes uh, people calling in can screw things up. Also, if you are watching Superman homepage live via an external speaker, please turn that down as we are on a bit of a delay, and that can screw things up. Yes, uh, and if you are tuning in live via YouTube tonight, we encourage you to get in there with the rest of the people who are watching live and post your comments. Have a chat with other people watching, uh, ask questions. Michael and I will react to your comments and questions as the show goes along. But if you would like your comment or question featured live on the screen, that's called a super chat. All you have to do is click the little dollar symbol there on YouTube. A slider will appear on your screen. You decide on the dollar amount you're willing to donate and we will feature your comment or question on the screen as we go to air. And thank you to our sponsors and patrons, Douglas Meacham, John Patrick Van Pelt, and Tina Murray. We appreciate your support. Well, Mike, uh, what's been new for you this week? Uh, nothing much. It's been really uh, quiet, actually, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, especially in terms of Superman news. Uh, well, it's it, only it's been just... six days since you and I were last doing this show because of the, the delay yeah. last week. Well, there is that too. So it, it seems like this came faster than it than it should. Mondays are always so busy. Mm. So it was really weird last week not having to do it, and then coming home on Tuesday and having to do it. So, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, there's no Superman related show to keep up with. Yeah. We got the holidays no, coming up, so it's just getting kind of quiet. Yeah. Well, uh, for me, this past weekend uh, here in Australia, uh, in Sydney, we had. Uh, Oz Comic Con Sydney, which is uh, a convention that uh, is has returned after a couple of uh, well, years, I guess, off with uh, COVID. And um, it was smaller than it has been in the past, but I got out there on Saturday and, um, yeah, got around, talked to a few people, uh, networked a little bit, got a few uh, possible interviews for this show for early next year. Uh, and um, yeah, just got the name out there. Got a, got recognised by one fan who uh, saw the Superman homepage T-shirt that I was wearing, and uh, came up to me and said loves the website. And uh, yeah, so that was really nice. And uh, yeah, had a chat with a few old friends and a few new friends made as well. Yeah, I'm really glad you got to do that because mm. uh, I know you guys have been on and off lockdown, uh, yes. you know, for the past two um, years. <laughs> <laughs> uh so uh so i'm glad that you got to get out there were you masked up or oh, yeah. was, was there i any... was i had yeah, my okay. superman mask and uh, everybody it was a condition of entry um and that wasn't a problem for a lot of the cosplayers out there uh because a lot of their characters were you know like spider-man were already masked up so um it mm -hmm. was an interesting way of for certain fans to uh abide by the rules but also continue on with their cosplay uh so that was uh really cool and really innovative um, but, uh, yeah, so I was, you know, caught up with a few people like, um, Chu Chan, who was an Australian, uh, artist who was the storyboard artist on Superman Returns, uh, 
he and I uh, originally knew each other from the comic book store that I used to frequent. He used to work there and uh, I was one of the regular customers and we got to chatting and then he went on to bigger and better things and uh, we've still kept in touch. So it was good to see him there uh, as a uh, presenting on Artist Alley and caught up with uh, another fan who does some artwork that uh, we're going to do uh, a giveaway for, for some of his Photoshop artwork. And I interviewed him, which is up on our YouTube channel as well. Or caught up with Nicola Scott, an Australian artist who Wonder Woman fans would know very well, but she's done obviously a lot of Superman covers as well, and some others. So uh, it's a few things in the pipeline for upcoming Superman homepage live shows. Awesome. I'm really looking forward to all of it. Yeah, so uh, it's great to get back into the convention side of things, but let's move on to what we've got to talk about tonight as far as Superman news that happened this past six days. And the big one has been Henry Cavill doing the rounds across, uh, and you know, well, there was a world premiere, so he did the red carpet there He uh, for Witcher Season 2, which is coming on December, what is it, 16th? No, December 17th on Netflix. Uh, season two about to premiere. He's been doing lots of interviews with TV shows and things like that. And he spoke to Lorraine, which is a um, UK uh, show where uh, obviously the host is goes by the name Lorraine. And the two of them had a chat about uh, with The Witcher season two, about his name being thrown in the hat for the next James Bond. He had his dog Cal with him. And he also had a few things to say about Superman and was quoted as saying that he is ready and waiting for the phone call to return to play Superman should Warner Brothers be interested. Yeah, I again, it's, it's nice that he's still excited. Um, I'm glad that he still has that dog too. That was a giant of a dog. Uh, I was reminded of that over Thanksgiving when he uh, when a memory popped up of him sitting there with the dog and the turkey. <laughs> Yeah, well, he says that uh, he's had Cal for like eight years, or the dog is eight years old. So um, that's one huge dog too. Yeah, the thing is giant. I mean, it's just like I'm. He, he's a big guy himself, so he's not quite ready to ride it into battle. But it it seems like it's almost that 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 much. Yeah. So. So I'm just going to grab the um, the clip here where Henry talks about Superman and. Um, I'll bring that to you so that uh, we can uh, have a look, listen to exactly what he did say. Um, so here is Henry Cavill talking about Superman. Superman, do you still have the outfit? I do still have the, the outfit. At the back of your closet, just in case. Just in case, yes, I do, yes, I that do. That with the tuxedo beside each other, <laughs> just ready. <laughs> ready and waiting for the phone calls. Because that um, was an amazing thing to do, wasn't it? Yeah, that was so much fun. Wow. I mean, it's the kind of thing where, I mean, even after, it's been so long since I've put the suit sure. on professionally. I bet it still um, fits, though. It's, uh, yes, yes, it does. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thankfully. And um, it, it's you look back and you just think, what a wonderful, what a wonderful opportunity. Yeah. And even if even if um, I were to stop acting tomorrow and go, you know, live on a yacht or a boat somewhere, a sailing boat, and just travel the med, um, then yeah, with Cal. Of uh, course. Obviously. I don't know how much he'd appreciate that, to be honest. So there's Henry. I don't know why they blur out the images for copyright reasons, I but, guess. But I mean, they're promotional material that you're allowed to use. That it that was weird. I, I was I was like, is that something that's going on with with Steve's video, or is that so? That's just that's just how it was on the show. Okay, very good. Yeah. <laughs> well, on YouTube anyway. I don't know if the, if on the show itself it was like that, but their YouTube clip was like that. So yeah, I mean, you know, Henry's saying there at the end, like even if he finished acting altogether, he would still look back fondly and say, what a great opportunity it was to play Superman. You know, regardless of anything else. Yeah, and I'm and I'm kind of wondering if him being Superman takes him out of the running to be Bond. Uh, I think I think he would be great at it. Um, mm. You know, especially after uh, the Man from Uncle. Mm -hmm. uh, but and uh, you know the Mission Impossible film he was in. Uh, but I wonder if like can can you do both? <laughs> Can you be two such legendary characters? <laughs> well, I don't see why not. I mean, he's going to be a legendary character with uh, his character on The Witcher. I mean, that could go for seven seasons if they follow the books. That's it's, it's very true. So you, you got that too. So I know he's... And he's uh, Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, and he played Sherlock Holmes. So, look, I'm really glad for Henry that he's been able to be 
not so much typecast and that he's been able to go on mm -hmm. and play other roles because that's obviously a fear for a lot of actors when they do play a character like Superman, they become synonymous. And he is synonymous with Superman because it doesn't matter where he goes, even when he's promoting The Witcher, uh, which he's probably, you know, now a little bit more famous for because it's an ongoing popular, hugely popular series on Netflix. Um, when he was on a show the other night uh, with Tom Holland, um, they were going on about, oh, we've got Superman and Spider-Man in the same room together. Yeah, it's like, he's still <laughs> Superman to everybody. And I guess for him, he's called his dog Cal. So, you know, it's still very much, he's still much, very much a fan and doesn't shy away from being recognized as Superman, but has done so well being able to play all these other roles as well, you know. Uh, so he's really diversified. And I, I think also it's not definitively over. No. And, and I think that's the weird thing is that it's not like Brandon Routh, who, you know, Crisis on Infinite Earths notwithstanding, he was pretty much done with Superman. Mm. Um, wasn't really at the terms he wanted to. And, and Dean Cain and, you know, uh, you know, all the other, I guess those are the only, and, and Tom Welling to a certain extent, you know, the role is over. Mm. Uh, so with, and, you know, now we got Tyler who seems pretty game, but he's been, even though he's been Superman for five years, he's only had his own show for one. Mm. So, so, uh, you know, that, that hasn't hit him yet. So, yeah, I mean, and, and I, I think it's also in his own self-interest to be excited about it. Yeah. Cause if he's on a chat show going, eh, I, I don't really want to play it anymore. Well, then it is, then it's going to be over. Yeah, exactly. No, he's, he's definitely interested. So obviously he's not going to, uh, push away any of those conversations. He's just going to play coy and and um, in the mind the gap says I think Cavill wants creative control and a starring role, and I think with Superman that's definitely something that he does have um, want to have a bigger interest, a bigger say in how the character is portrayed. So I think there'll be a conversation along those lines if it ever comes to pass that he gets to play Superman again. But uh, yeah, we'll wait and see. Uh, as he keeps saying, like. Cape is still in the closet. <laughs> Hanging there really uncomfortably with those two like shoulder things that uh hopefully that just uh, stick up on their own. <laughs> with no uh, no moth eaten holes in there. So uh they, it, keep it pristine, Henry. Uh, hopefully the knock comes on the door, the phone call happens pretty soon. All right, uh speaking of Superman movies, uh if you're in the Illinois area, I don't know if we mentioned this last week or not. I think we might have quickly mentioned the fact that Pickwick Theatre in Park Ridge, Illinois, has uh, Superman the movie airing a uh, screening on December seventeenth at seven p.m. I do recall having a chat about that last week. Yes, we did. Mm. Um, you showed the the cool graphic, the graphic, and they're doing the thing for Richard Donner. Yes, so uh, there it is. Dedicating to Richard Donner, and uh, it's the the prelude music with Jay Warren. So that looks pretty exciting. Yes. It's not a bad deal either. Ten dollars for advance tickets and twelve dollars at the door. Really, I mean that that's about how much a, a regular ticket is normally. Mm -hmm. So if you're in the area, check that out. All right, the big, the other big news for the TV side of things, and people are already talking about it in our comments, was a photo that appeared of Tyler Heckland uh, in what looks like a new or updated costume for season two of Superman and Lois. There it is on the left-hand side of your screen there. Uh, the interesting thing is that's the director for one of the episodes who was uh, the pink uh, Power Ranger. Yeah, Amy Jo Johnson. Uh, I was a little too old for Power Rangers. Yes, it came same. on when I was a senior in high school. Uh, however, that did not stop me from thinking that she was extremely attractive. Um, so... And then she was on, um, she did a lot of acting after that, but she was on a show called Flashpoint, yep. which was a Canadian show where she was like a member of a SWAT team, and she was really good on that. So it's kind of neat to uh, to see her doing this. She is short. <laughs> yeah, because everyone's been talking about Tyler not necessarily being the largest, super tallest Superman that we've seen. Um, but looking at the costume, and it's hard to judge by... A photo because what they shoot 
uh, on you know with filters and things on camera can always be different anyway but there is the the best image that I could find of the season 1 costume the most notable thing is the boots we now have yes. that v configuration at the shin area at the top of the boots that wasn't in season 1's costume yeah, and, and somebody pointed out that it's less padding, and I think that's a really good move because as much as I liked the costume, uh, I, I, I felt like in some shots it looked like he it was too too much padding. I yeah. mean, he's got a pretty good physique on his own. Uh, the S, I don't know if it's bigger, but it, it looks brighter. brighter. Yeah, the yellow stands out. It doesn't look as dirty as the other one did. <sighs> So, uh, I mean, the cape and the belt and all that are pretty much the same as they were. Mm. Uh, but like you said, the, the, the problem is, is that this is a behind-the-scenes photo. But usually costumes don't look as good in behind-the-scenes mm -hmm. photos. True. So the fact that this looks as good as it does means it's probably going to look amazing on screen. Yeah, so uh, not a lot of changes. I think the boots are obviously the most obvious one and probably a brighter um s shield but we won't know until we see actual footage of that yes definitely less padding um but again we don't know if that's just because he's you know doing some behind the scenes stuff or what the case may be it does look obvious that there is less padding when you compare the one on the left to the one on the right um and mm -hmm. you can see that the uh it's not as tight fitting without the the um, muscle suit underneath, but uh, still very much recognizable as Superman. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, looks more comfortable, too. Yeah. I have seen a lot of complaints, people saying it looks like, you know, it's bought at Ruby's and, you know, one of a store-bought kind of uh, costume. But he, we have to remember, as opposed to, say, Superman, sorry, Man of Steel, where it was a Kryptonian outfit that was created by you know, Kryptonian technology, we still don't know where this suit came from. And if Martha did indeed make his suit like she's supposed to have in many of the versions of the story, then it can't be anything other than, you know, tailor-made for him by a human being. Yeah, and, and I think that's an unfair uh, comparison because, again, it's a behind-the-scenes shot. Yeah. And... I remember back like in 2012 when The Amazing Spider-Man, the one with Andrew Garfield was coming out, there were a couple behind the scenes like uh, paparazzi shots of the costume and it looked it looked terrible mm. in those photos. And then you see it on screen and you're like, oh, okay, it's lighting. It's, you know, yeah. it, it, it's meant to be seen under certain circumstances. It's not like Christopher Reeve's outfit, which... Uh, I mean, they had different shadings of the costume depending on the blue screen and all that. But at the same time, it it, it always looked like what it was, no matter where you saw it. Yeah. It's it's a little different now. Yeah, interesting. Uh, just going back quickly to Henry Cowell, um, when he uh, they showed a photo of one of the talk shows that he was on, uh, where he they showed that photo that we recently uh, released, where he is in the Christopher Reeve replica costume. And they put that up on the screen during the the, um, the, the talk show, and he was like, um, "Can I be honest? That looks shit." <laughs> he said that, <laughs> and well, you, know, you know, and Tom Holland was like, "Yeah, this is Superman after a big night out because he was obviously unshaven, and you know, obviously the S <laughs> looks a little bit askew." But uh, yeah, he said it wasn't meant to ever be seen. It's obviously just there for them to go get an idea. Yeah, and you know. I you know, we us seeing it is exciting, but to like show it to him seems a little unfair. Yeah. Uh, in all honesty, because the, it's like that one photo that kept circulating for years of Nicolas Cage mm. in the costume, and it's terrible. And then you see other costume tests that he did, and they actually look really good. Mm. And it's just like some of these things just weren't meant for com public consumption. <laughs> exactly. But uh, Superman and Lois Season 2 will premiere on The CW on Tuesday, January 11th at 8pm. So we've literally got a month to go until uh, the Season 2 premiere. 
Uh, fans in the UK finally getting the season one. I think season episode two of season one airs this week. That and the pilot episode over there rated so highly it actually outrated the US premiere uh, of Superman and Lois. So uh, well done to all the UK fans. Yeah, I, I, I it was interesting seeing that. I know that uh, you know some of the some of the people that I know that are in the UK were very excited. Mm that it was finally coming and coming to BBC one. I mm-hmm. mean, that's a, uh, that's, that, that's kind of prestigious <laughs> for it to be airing primetime uh, over there like that. And, you know, to do what, I mean, there aren't as many people in the UK as there are in America. Mm-hmm. So that's like to, to get a better share is, is, is even more of an accomplishment. Especially considering the this day and age where if you're a true Superman fan, or actually, I wouldn't say true Superman. If you're a big Superman fan and you couldn't wait, then there are other ways yeah. of, of being able to see it online or, you know, downloading it illegally or whatever, you you know, a friend sharing it with you or however you want to go about it there, you know, to wait that long. Getting a, VP, getting <laughs> yeah. a VPN and exactly. pretending that you're in America. Yeah, there's, so. you know, a myriad of ways of, of getting it. But um, the fact that it's still rated so highly... Um, after all, you know, season one's aired in there and in the US and here in Australia already gone months ago. Um, and they're only just getting the, the season one premiere and it's still rated so well is phenomenal. So it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. All right. Uh, speaking of TV things, Young Justice Phantoms has a new image poster for the third arc of the series. Uh, it's heavily involving Zatanna. <laughs> And um, so it's a new episode streaming as of this week, December 2nd, and then uh, moving obviously December 9th to the next one. Uh, the current, uh, the ninth episode of the current season is titled Odd New, which is backwards for Satana Undo. And uh, all the episodes involving Satana have the same kind of story title, uh, backwards speaking spelling to them. So. Uh, if you're into, uh, if you've got HBO Max and you're into Young Justice, the animated series, Phantoms, uh, the new season, the ninth and tenth episodes, uh, starting a new story involving Zatanna. Yep. Interesting. Looks interesting. Our, nope. Yeah, our current poll is about uh, if are you watching Young Justice Phantoms, and most people are either not, or they can't because they don't have HBO Max. So, interesting. That would uh, that would pose a problem, yes. I would assume. So that's Young Justice Phantoms. All right. Uh, looking at the comic book side of things, before we get into some of our regular segments and before we get into our halfway break, uh, there is a new podcast episode of All Star Superfan Podcast where Mark Wade talks about his legendary Superman titles, Superman Birthright and Kingdom Come as well as his recently announced Superman title or Superman Batman title due for release in early 2022. And it involves uh, Dan Mora as the artist doing the uh, comic book uh, for a world's finest series, limited series with Mark Wade. Yeah, I I really liked those sketches when they came out earlier. Mm. Um, I, I just... I just have a question and it's, it's, I think it's a legitimate one. How do these guys get these interviews? Yeah. Good question. Well, like, like I, I know you've been trying to get Wade for years mm-hmm. and it just doesn't happen. And, and we're the Superman homepage. And I'm not saying that to say that we're better than other people, but it's not like we're the new kids on the block either. Yeah. I know. I know. I'm with you. And I keep every week send the same email to the same people at DC, you know, requesting interviews with Tom Taylor and uh, Philip Kennedy Johnson. And I keep getting, oh, they're busy, they're busy. And then I see other interviews going up regularly with other people. I'm going, hey, what's wrong with us? But anyway, uh, yeah. if you're interested, this podcast, issue 12 of the All Star Superfan podcast with Mark Wade. And if you're keen to check out this story, the backup story we found in January's 2022 Detective Comics 1050. Will uh, kick off this world's finest collaboration that you'll need to read to believe. <laughs> That's what it says. All right. I like uh, I like huge over the top promotion like that. <laughs> yeah, indeed. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We're almost at the halfway mark of tonight's show. I'm going to uh, play a few commercial breaks, 
And then we're going to come back on the flip side to do the all uh, fan favorite question uh, segment of our show this week in history and get into more comic book talk right after this. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a moment with the exciting climax of today's episode. So stand by. If you're enjoying Superman Homepage Live, then please like and share this video with your family and friends. Also, if you'd like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, then you can click on the bell to receive notifications whenever we post a new video. You can also join our YouTube membership program, just click the join button below. Or you can become a patron and support our website by going to patreon.com slash Superman Homepage. Up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's supermanhomepage.com, the number one Superman fan site in the world. Supermanhomepage.com, covering the world of Superman from the 1930s to today. News, reviews, rumors, and reports. Supermanhomepage.com, for all your Superman comics, TV shows, movies, cartoons, radio shows, and more. Everything you ever wanted to know about the man of steel and more superman homepage.com thanks superman homepage for all the support over the years i uh, really appreciate it i'm matt bomer I'm the voice of superman and superman unbound and this is the superman homepage right here on superman homepage just try one if you don't like it it's easy to give up uh oh nicotine i'd better move fast up up and away go on kid go on Superman, is it hard to give up smoking, or is it easy like nicotine says? You no good windbag nicotine. No, no, Superman. Leave me one. Please, I need one. <laughs> yes. That's how hard it is, and that's why I never say yes to a cigarette. And we're back on Superman Homepage Live, where we're going to get into the fan favorite segment of our show. All right, Michael, what was our fan favorite question from last week? Um, it was, what was your favorite episode of Lois and Clark? Uh, and Stephen Marshall wrote in to say, my favorite episode of Lois and Clark is the green, green glow of home. The funny thing is, as a kid, I remember complaining because uh, there wasn't a lot of Superman in it. But uh, as an adult... I'm a sucker for Smallville stories. Seeing Superman show Lois what his hometown life is like is just wonderful. I think it's probably my favorite introduction to Kryptonite in any medium. I also think it's the best use of Kryptonite as he doesn't immediately recover from it and he has to stop Trask while he's powerless. Great stuff. Yep, thank you, Stephen. Uh, all right, next up we had John uh, P. Van Pelt who wrote, My favorite episode of Lois and Clark and the New Adventures of Superman is the pilot episode because we see Clark Kent's mum show him the costume that she made for him as Superman. That was a fun segment. Mm -hmm. yeah, that sequence especially... of them trying different outfits with masks and all those kinds of things. And, and playing, uh, holding out for a hero. Yeah. So, uh, still a very good pilot. Um, yeah. Even though certain things about the show have not aged well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Ryan Ignatius Pratt writes, I would say that my favorite Lois and Clark episode would be the second season episode, Tempest Fugitive. From Lois finally discovering Clark's secret to Tempest's biting accusations that she is most the most galactically stupid woman who ever lived, and from Clark dealing with the fallout of his exposed identity to the character-defining line, Superman is what I can do, Clark is who I am. This episode was arguably a defining moment for the TV series. In, additions, in addition, the superb episode was only enhanced by the touching moment of Clark meeting younger versions of the Kent, as well as Lane Davies' brilliant performance as Tempest. Speaking of Lane, I was fortunate to meet him at a gathering of Lois and Clark fans back in 2005. I have the attached uh, pictures of the moment. Should you deem either of them worthy to share? And there is one of those photos of Ryan with uh, Lane Davies, uh, who was... I have that shirt. Yes, so do I. <laughs> we should wear it on the same day. 
uh, next <laughs> next time we do a show, just to confuse people wondering which one's you, which one's me. Oh, I, that that will never be a problem. <laughs> I, I did find out recently, though, listening to an interview with Lane Davies, that he's like two hours north of me. Oh, wow. uh, <laughs> he lives in Georgia. It's it was really interesting to find out. Um, but he has. There are a lot of things about those episodes that I did not know. And after listening to that interview, hearing certain things uh, about the behind the scenes stuff, nothing like salacious or anything, mm. but just just creative decisions and such. Uh, but he obviously had a ball playing that yeah, character. You can tell. Um, I, 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 um, I was thinking about this. What is my favorite episode? And it. Uh, honestly, um, I'll I'll have to go Tempest Fugitive as well. Uh, it really was one of the defining episodes of the entire series, mm. uh, and it was funny and over the top, but in a good way. Yeah. Like it served the story. Sure. Yeah, I, I don't really have a favorite myself. Obviously, the pilot has a special place as most pilot episodes do because they touch on the lore of you know of the, the superman mythos that we know and love and um but yeah you know he was a great villain lane davies as, as as tempest and really brought the show to life and i think the other actors around him uh reacted to his enjoyment of the character and and put on a better performance themselves um so yeah they're pretty good episodes that they that they've uh selected in this uh fan favorite segment of our show mm -hmm. um, it's been a long time since i've watched episodes of, of lois and clark um you know the, the the wedding was not a bad episode but it wasn't the greatest and because we'd been waiting for it for so long and had been put off by the whole frog eating thing that delayed the wedding um so yeah that was a bit of a, a problem but um there were some really good villains in there that i think brought the character to, to life i like the episodes when they finally allowed lois to know that clark was superman because mm -hmm. the dynamic between them and her covering for him uh was a really interesting way of um of the, of that dynamic because for the longest time we've always seen superman making excuses for why for clark why he had to get out of there to be superman and now we've got lois doing that for him to perry or whoever else was around in watching it, as as Jeff and I have been doing for from crisis to crisis, mm -hmm. we've gone through the first all, all the first three, the entirety of the first three seasons. The more I watch it, the more it seems to me to be the modern day era of the radio series. Yeah. Uh, mainly uh, for for a lot of different reasons. One, how Clark is more of a central character. Uh, you know, and, and, and the TV series obviously felt like the radio series because the first season was produced by the same guy, mm -hmm. but I'm talking like in the nineties mm -hmm. and they had their own villains, mm -hmm. uh, that were exclusive to the show. And like, they would, they had like the most outlandish, like, like, um, ba bad brain Johnson. <laughs> I mean, that is, that is a nineties version of the laugher and Del to Der Teufel. I mean, it yeah. really is. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. <laughs> So that's really cool. Thanks to those guys for responding to that fan favorite question. What is our new question for this week, Michael? Oh, this is going to be a fun one. What is your mm. favorite Funko Pop vinyl Superman figure? I've got about 10 of them behind me, so uh, You'll have to pick that's one. going to be hard to choose from next week. <laughs> yeah, so get involved with the fan favorite segment of our show. The email address is there at the bottom of your screen, info at supermanhomepage.com. And send us photos and uh, let us know why and what is your favorite Funko Pop vinyl Superman figure. Because there are a lot of them. There have been some specialty ones. We've got one we're going to be talking about soon on our show tonight. Um, yes. And there was that one we spoke about last week of uh, the Superman and Lois exclusive mm -hmm. one. So uh, to Zavi. So um, yeah, get involved in the fan favorite segment of our show. Show us your favorite Funko Pop vinyl Superman figures. And we'll uh, show those when we return to this segment next monday night all right that's the fan favorite segment of our show let's move into this week in history come with me now my son as we break through the bottles of your earthly confinement traveling through time and space 
All righty. Uh, not as uh, big as some weeks, but not as light as last week. We start in 1951 with Superboy number 18, which had Lana Lang, movie star, Superboy's big brother, and the men who doubted Superboy. Uh, and an interesting um, cover of him painting, uh, whitewashing some fences. Uh, jumping ahead to 1961, it's a fun one. Because it's the incredible team of Batmite and Mr. McShiz Pinnalick on the cover of World's Finest number 123. Uh, that can't go well for either Superman or Batman, uh, in all honesty. Uh, and it's funny because I just recently uh, reread the uh, Superman Batman Generation story with them in it. So uh, it's kind of funny to see one like in the time period it's 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 actually set in. Mm. Uh, you also had a Tommy Tomorrow and Green Arrow story in that issue. Uh, jumping ahead to 1971, we have World's Finest number 209. This was when World's Finest, uh, I think I've mentioned this before, but in case I haven't, World's Finest went from being a Batman team-up book to a Superman team-up book Ooh. for a very brief amount of time. And this one had Superman teaming up with Hawkman, against uh well it says meet the templar uh, tempter and die that's satan um <laughs> yeah and there is a batman story in it with tweedledum and tweedledee so uh that's gonna be terrible uh just kidding uh jumping ahead to 1981 we have superman number 369 which definitely has a yuletide flair to it yeah. this is superman's last christmas uh he gave parasite his heart and the very next day the parasite gave it away <laughs> ah, mm. i hate wham um yeah but a really cool cover by rich buckler and frank uh Giacoya. going to 1991 we have the adventures of superboy number 22 kind of nearing the end of this uh series and i'm kind of curious it has like five inkers uh, listed. So I wonder if uh, if there was like a little bit of a deadline problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> Where they needed to get some many hands on that project. Also, <sighs> Jolt and Blockhouse fight Superman in Superman, the Man of Steel, number eight. I love Louise Simonson uh, and Kieran Dwyer actually did the, uh, the interiors, but John Bogdano did the cover. Uh, these were not the best villains <laughs> for the Man of Steel. I, I say oh, that with wow. love. Um, going ahead to 19, uh, 2001, uh, man, it's, it's really weird Jeez. to see the February 2002. Yeah, this um, this is like really towards the end of Jeff Loeb's run on the book, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I remember this uh, being a thing, and it's a really fun cover from Ed McGinnis. Uh, but both Ed McGinnis and Kevin McGuire did interiors on that uh, from uh, from the same week. And if you notice that these covers kind of have a similar theme, it's because all of the covers from this month, DC had them uh, drawn a little differently, where like in the Superman Adventures number 64 here, uh, the logo is, is kind of in the image instead right. of being a separate thing. Uh, and that was Brainiac Beyond. And you also had Young Justice number 40, where Superboy was in that costume. I barely remember that costume. <laughs> that is a really 90s looking cover. And it's nothing against Todd Nyack, because I, I really like his art. Uh, going to the last comic on the list, we have Jumping to 2011, which still makes me a little sad that that is now 10 years ago. We had Action Comics number four, This the debut of Steel. Um, book is still good at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. We are going to get to a point where that's not going to be the case. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Uh, real World, we have on December 8th, both Terry Hatcher, uh, who was born in 1964 on that date, and David Harewood from Supergirl was born in 1965. And I have to say... He does not look like he was born in 1965. No, he's That man is aging well. incredibly well. Very well. <laughs> so, uh, and on December 10th, unfortunately, we're ending on kind of on a sad note. Uh, Richard Pryor, uh, who played Gus Gorman in Superman 3, uh, passed away uh, on that date in 2005. 
uh, which is kind of sad because last week we were talking about his birthday and uh, now we got to talk about that day. So Mm. it's just like we rarely have them that close. But that is this week in history. Excellent. Thank you very much. A few comments. Uh, Comics Legend asking if we ever do Superman toy unboxings. Uh, I have done a few unboxing videos, not necessarily of toys of late. I did a uh, unboxing video of a Superman uh, wall decal, a big sticker thing that I put up on a uh, cupboard here. Um, I've done on unboxings of a, the DC Fandom kind of box of treats that they sent me during the Fandom. Um, but uh, no, not a lot of unboxing videos in our collection. What about you, Michael? Uh, I. I don't have a really good camera setup. I mean, this is barely functional uh, or barely adequate. Um, it gets by on what we need to do. And it's one of those things where, what do people get out of those? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I really got to ask. And Other I'm not than insulting envy. people who do them. And I'm not insulting people who Watch enjoy watching, watching them. them. Uh, because everybody has their thing and I, and I, and, you know, Mike don't judge, but, uh, I, I just, one, I'm, I'm worried that like, I would try to be doing it carefully and I would just rip and tear something that I didn't <laughs> want to rip and tear. Uh, and two getting like, especially the McFarlane figures out of their packaging is like a thing. And then I'm going to try to stand it up hmm. and that's going to be a nightmare all on its own. So, uh, um, I mean, people, I, have I don't made, think... people have made careers on YouTube, like that PewDiePie kid unboxing toys and what have you. It's like, I don't get it. Maybe I'm too old. I don't know. Yeah, I think it, it does come down to the fact that we're, we're, we're two rapidly aging individuals. <laughs> um, you know, I'm not 50 yet, but I'm getting there. So, uh, but yeah, it's just, it's just one of those things where you, you, where you watch, you know, the videos that people like to watch and seem to get the most attention are either the people that are just saying salacious things, Mm. um, somewhat controversial things just to say it and putting it in there in in like the, the description so Mm -hmm. that people will click on it, uh, or unboxing. And the other thing is I don't buy stuff all that often and no one's sending me anything. So (laughs) there's that too. (laughs) Uh, same thing with reaction videos. I just they they because most of my time watching a trailer or something like is just like you don't get. I don't sit there going, oh my yeah. god, oh oh, I can't believe this. You know, like they're all yeah, I, I BS. Mean, my my wife filmed me watching Brandon Routh and Tyler Hecklin fighting, and it really was just me going, <laughs> and then you at might... the end. <laughs> I did a little applaud, but that was it. It wasn't like I was just like, oh, God, what the hell? What's going Oh, my. Whoa. Uh, so, anyway. Uh, Comic, but... Legends, uh, Comics Legends says in the chat that it makes you decide to buy them or not and just admire the product. So, again, that's yeah, that's an explanation, and I appreciate that. I really do. Yeah, especially if it's something that you are not sure if you want to purchase or not. You want to see it, you know, um, a bit more closely i mean these days you know when you're talking about figures and statues and things the companies themselves do a really good job of either of either showing multiple angles and you know and different yeah. photos and backgrounds and really sell it or they do you know a video you know rotation of it or whatever um but then, and then there are people on facebook like um one of the guys that we're friends with who has the craziest statue collection we're going to have to get him on a show one day uh, and just can seem to be able to afford everything that comes out. And you and I sitting there going, how does this dude yeah. afford to get these every week? Yeah, like like just about more than once a month, we'll have like, you know, this company is putting out a cyborg Superman statue and it's incredibly detailed and it's hyper articulated and, and you can put on different heads it's fifteen thousand dollars, <laughs> and you have to promise your firstborn grandchild. Uh, and then there, and this, this dude apparently buys them all. So you know, well, good luck to him. But uh, yeah, so if it's that, something that you're never going to get, and you want to see somebody, you know, you want to live vicariously through them and go, ah, oh, you know, one day. Yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, people probably do that with our collections, and we, you know, you've got a, probably a comic book collection to rival many. And you know, obviously, my collection is not something to be uh, coughed at, but or sneezed at, as they say. But um, it, there are still some people out there who have just wonderful, absolutely amazing collections. Yeah, and I admire that. I I, yeah. I I always appreciate when people are passionate about what they're into, and especially if they focus on something like yes. my collection, my comic collection. I got I got to admit, it was more of a cry for help uh, than a comic book collection uh, for years. And now that it's more focused, I, I kind of appreciate it more. Mm. You know, it's just like I don't have fifty years of Superman comics. I just have a certain. I have the the eras that mean something to me uh, on a personal level. I don't. I, I've got all the new new fifty two either digitally or in hardcover. Mm -hmm. So why do I need the issues, especially when that one with Calvin Ellis was going insane and I got good wedge for it? Um, you know why why hang on to these to to, to the things that don't mean anything? Mm -hmm. But I I have many friends who buy all of like the Marvel Legends figures. And I marvel, no pun intended, really. Uh, I, I, it's just, it's just amazing to me that they're focused on that, and it's just hmm. like that's cool. That, that is, that's not buying everything just to buy everything. You're curating uh, something for yourself. Yeah, uh, so that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, not a lot of unboxing videos between us. But we're uh, happy to talk about the figures that are available and let you know about them. Or auctions like yes, this current auction are currently nice taking segue. place. Yes, <laughs> at comicconnect.com. There, the auction bidding for the issue of Superman number one with a CGC rating of 7.0 is currently wow. at $1,775,000, but is expected to probably go over the $2 million mark uh, because it's a very rare one in that it was purchased in 1979 from the original owner who purchased it when it was released in 1939 so it's only had two owners and it's probably and it's been kept in what looks like spectacular condition yeah that thing looks amazing like like when you put up the picture i'm like i have never seen one that nice mm. and obviously it's somebody that took care of their books uh, both the original owner and the the current owner that's selling it. So to keep one that is, a, I, I mean, I, I'm not seeing any tears. Nope. I'm not seeing really any discoloration. Like, like, did they keep that thing hermetically sealed for for 80 years? <laughs> I know it's so it's it's very rare. The auction ends on December 16th. As I said, it's going uh, now on uh, auction at comicconnect.com. Um, you don't see this. There's only a handful of copies of Superman known, known to exist, Superman number one. And in this type of condition, uh, it's pretty rare. And uh, so this comic book rarely comes up for sale. And once word gets out, every serious collector and investor will be thinking of making a bid. As I said, it's expected to go for over $2 million And it will end on December 15th. Um, and there's also, sorry, December, what did I say? December... 16th. Uh, there's also a, an a, a edition of Action Comics number one, the very first Superman comic book ever uh, at Comic Connect as well. This is only a 3.0 CGC rated a comic of Superman's first appearance, and that'll end on December uh, 15th, Wednesday. You know, you know I, I was just sitting here thinking, have you ever seen like Best in Show? Uh, the movie Best in Show or, or Mighty Wind? You know, no. the, the, it's... it's uh, uh, years ago, uh, the guys behind Spinal Tap uh, did a couple more movies that were more like improvisational. Yeah. And Best in Show was about a bunch of people who show dogs at dog shows. Oh, yeah. And it's comedic. I'd really like them to do something with like serious collectors who buy this type of book. Mm. Because you said serious collectors, and it has, to, and I just have to imagine that there is like a complete network of these people that buy these high-end comics and they must be fascinating individuals. Mm. Like, you know, to one, have the amount of money to be able to do that and 
are they competitive with each other or yeah. like the, the, are there rivalries or are there people that to you, I, I'm just, I really want to see that now. <laughs> yeah. Well, cause when you think about it for there to be multiple bidders to get this over a particular dollar amount, they have to be going at it. You know, you, you bid, I'll yeah. bid and then somebody else will bid. And then, so they're really competing for it to drive that price up. If it was just the one person they would get it for whatever the asking price was, it wouldn't hike up every time. It wouldn't increase in value if there weren't a network of people out there who were looking for them. Comics Legend says, why wouldn't DC Comics buy the issue? One, they probably have, or they do have uh, an issue of, uh, especially Action Comics 1, I've held it uh, in their archives. Uh, they've got it. Um, as for why would they want to invest in something that they originally published um, when they can earn that money from people buying new comic books. Um, I don't think they necessarily want to spend $2 million on repurchasing Yeah, that, that doesn't seem like a good... It's not a good business model no. um, for it. I mean, it's just... it. Like you said, they, they, they do probably... You know, I know you've held... You know, you've held Action Comics number one. Apparently, I'm the only one that hasn't. Uh... <laughs> But, you know, they have their the copies that have been probably in the offices forever. And I know they have the big bound books, or they used to. Uh, Just going to rub uh, it in your face uh, and put this over your face uh, right there, Michael. Oh, thank you. Well, that, that's, that's <laughs> nice to you, Steve. I appreciate that. Were they watching you really closely while you were yes. holding it? Yes, they were. Okay. I didn't have, no backpack was allowed or anything, you know, no bags. So, <laughs> so but... Um, but no, I, I yeah, I don't think I don't think that's in DC's best interest mm -hmm. to have it. I mean, I know that their current offices have like like tour level decorations and and, and stuff that you can go see. But mm. uh, yeah, yeah, two well, million dollars is a lot of money. Exactly. So if there are comic books that you think that you would be able to purchase, they probably are the ones that are available this week. And let's have a look at them. There's yep. another segue for you, Michael. Uh, December. Oh, you're you know, on it tonight, oh, sir. You are spotting you those are raccoons. Snapping them right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. To have a look at the comic books available this week, this is what you have to look forward to. And there's pretty few, there's quite a few of them, some interesting ones as well. We have uh, Dark Knights of Steel number two, this 12 issue mini series, which has a number of variant covers that you might want to have a look at right there. Also available this week is the sixth issue of Justice League Infinity, uh, which is based on the animated series Justice League Unlimited. Then you've got Suicide Squad number 10. As you can see, there's uh, Connor there uh, at the bottom of the screen, not looking too well. And that's also available in a variant cover. You have the first annual, uh, 2021 annual for Superman, Son of Kal-El. And that is also available in this very interesting variant cover. Nice crotch shot there of Lex. Um, you've also got World of Krypton number one, the new six issue limited series. Uh, first issue available this week, and that is available in a variant cover right there. And this one of a Kelex or Kelex type robot also Ooh, that, available. That's like steampunk Kelex. That's kind of mm. interesting. <laughs> so they're the comic books available this week, and you'll be able to see reviews of pretty much all those comic books going up on our website tomorrow morning yep that's uh, uh a good list yeah, that's a really impressive keylex cover uh I, i'm still not completely convinced that the world needed another world of krypton uh mini series, series. uh but comic book wise you know it's, it's pretty much at that point where yeah. you can do it because yeah, the audience right. has cycled around for sure now, well, speaking of statues and figures and things that are becoming available, Iron Studios recently revealed a number of upcoming statues and are taking pre-orders for things. Uh, this next one is of Superboy, um, which is a Ooh. deluxe DC Comics series number seven art scale, one-tenth sta scale statue uh, of Superboy. Um, he's, uh, he stands on the Twisted Remains of a metal uh, Kryptonian robotic supervillain known as Brainiac, obviously, um, and or one of his mechanical creations anyway. And the hero is in his uh, leather jacket costume, 
this is a, as I said, one-tenth scale statue, which is expected to be available in the third quarter of 2022 and is now available for pre-order with a value of $179.99. That's actually rather reasonable. You know, when, when I look at this costume, one, I love this costume because it's his original costume. Mm -hmm. But two, it, it it just drives home the point that most of the time, costumes like this are function over uh, form over function. Cool. Like when, when he's like putting the costume on, he's like, I got one belt. But you know what I think this outfit needs? Three. It needs two belts. Well, it's two it belts around the, around the waist, yeah, and then one around yeah. the leg. That's right, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, that's what this needs. And, uh, so. you know, getting those gloves over the uh, over the uh, leather jacket sleeves is not an easy thing either. No, I, I'm sure he's got, like, a little thing where they hook on to it and he just puts the whole thing on at once. Uh, that, so, that's how uh, I would do it anyways. Yeah, you can pre-order yours now through our website if you're interested in purchasing this one. But they also, at their recent um, Iron Studio, Inside Iron Studios second edition virtual event, which took place at CCXP Worlds 2021, they unveiled a number of other upcoming statues, including uh, these. Oops, I just clicked the right button right there. There's a Superman, Daffy Duck as Superman uh, figurine. Um, and uh, that's from the Space Jam 2 movie uh so for looney tunes fans that's something you might want to pick up there's also a black suit superman from Zack snyder's justice league one fourth scale statue uh just in case you didn't get the 17 others that have been released over the last year or so and then there's also a steppenwolf statue of the same scale and these are prototypes pending licensing approval that Steppenwolf's kind of nice. Mm. And then uh, another figure that might interest you if you're uh, collecting Funko Pops, as we were talking about earlier, is the Electric Blue Superman. Uh, did someone say Blue Steel? Uh, it's a... <laughs> it's a Funko Pop uh, 2021 Fall Convention Limited Edition uh, a convention exclusive, um, which is available through Entertainment Earth. Uh, you can order it through our website. It's only fifteen dollars, so uh, I pro um, probably sell pretty fast. I am so, I have to get one. I just mm -hmm. have to get one. I am, I remain continually fascinated that a storyline that is derided by people, everybody makes fun of this era, and yet there is so much merchandise yeah. about Electric Blue Superman. Like, so, like, 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 it just boggles my mind. You know there's a red variant going to come sooner or later, too. God, I hope so, because I need it. You need um, them as a set. Yeah, I, I just, I, I have... I, there's only like one figure I don't have. Um, and that's because I just haven't wanted to plunk down $40 to get it. But uh, yeah, I, I want that. I, I, I saw, as soon as I saw it posted on Twitter, I'm like, I have to get that. I, I just need that in my life. <laughs> Very cool. Also, before we wrap up, as we're getting right to the end of the show, don't forget the new Super Trivia quiz for Superman homepage is available. Three questions there for you to answer head to the favorites menu at supermanhomepage.com. But that is the end of our show for tonight, for this week. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thanks to our sponsors, Douglas Meacham, John Patrick Van Pelt, and Tina Murray. And thank you to you, my co-host, Mr. Mike Ball Bailey. Thank you, Mike. Pleasure as always, Steve. And thank you to everyone on the YouTube comments there for your participation, Michael, Mind the Gap, Comics Legend, uh, Geiger, Akansha, uh, Michael, Mark, and so many others. Thank you for your participation in the show tonight. Michael and I will be back next week on Monday, December... What would it be? December 12th? 13th. December 13th yes. for another edition of Superman Homepage Live. We can do Mark. math. Yeah, we can. Just 6 plus 7, 13. We hope you'll join us then. Uh, be sure to check out supermanhomepage.com for all your daily news updates on everything surrounding the Man of Steel. I'm Steve Eunice, on behalf of myself and Michael Bailey, 
Thanks for watching Superman Homepage Live, brought to you by supermanhomepage.com.